Hi, I'm Beth with American Patchwork and Quilting, and today I'm showing you how to make a flying geese table runner. This is a super simple project to make because it's all just one unit, the flying geese unit. It's also really customizable, so you can make it to fit any occasion. We're using the Holiday Essentials Americana Collection by Stacy Ishu from Moda Fabrics. This fun red, white, and blue line just screams summer with its pinwheels, flags, and stars. You can use patriotic fabrics for so many occasions throughout the summer. I'm also using two colors of Moda Bella solids for this table runner. So I have a red and a blue, and then I've cut out all my pieces, and you'll find all the instructions in the download, and you'll find that in the video description. But it's just two sizes. So we've cut three and a half by six and a half inch rectangles from our red and blue, 20 of each for a total of 40, and then 10 each of eight different prints these are three and a half inch squares. So I have four prints going with the blue and four going with the red. And keep in mind when you're picking these out that you definitely want some contrast between your rectangles and your squares so that you'll really see that triangle of the flying geese. Next, use a pencil to mark a diagonal line on the wrong side of each three and a half inch square. Align a marked print three and a half inch square with one end of our rectangle and just keep track of which one of your squares are going with which rectangles and note the direction of the drawn line and we will sew on that line. When I'm sewing these I like to start on the inside of the rectangle and go towards the outside. It's just easier to get a smooth start on this side than on the point. And I also turned on my laser light this way I can make sure I'm exactly on that line as I sew across. Once sewn, trim excess, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance, and then press open the attached triangle. Now we're going to add the square on the other side of our rectangle. So make sure that you grab your matching fabric and place it on the end of your rectangle. Note the direction of the drawn line. It's going toward the center. And then we'll do the same thing as before. We'll sew on the drawn lines. When adding the second square, I do like to start on the point instead of the inside of the rectangle because there's a seam there now sometimes that gets twisted and flipped on the bottom and you just don't get as smooth of a start so i did switch out for a straight stitch plate so this has a smaller opening for the needle to go down so there's also less surface area for that to pull your point down into the machine so that is the straight stitch plate i've already put it on so you can see this is the regular one so that's a lot bigger of a hole. And so this can help you if you're having trouble with those points getting pulled down into your machine, try switching to a straight stitch plate. Trim and press as you did before and that's your completed flying geese unit. So you're making 40 total. You'll have eight different flying geese fabric combinations and you'll have five of each one. If you have an AccuQuilt fabric die cutting machine, this is the perfect time to use it. This project just needs one die and it has both the shapes on the one die that you need to complete this table runner. So it's the three inch by six inch finished flying geese die that you would want. And you can just fold your fabric onto the die. We like the fan folding method. This way you're able to get several layers. And then you can do the same thing with the bigger piece. So this is gonna be your outside units and this is your inside units. So we're going to be able to get multiple shapes at once. I'm using the Go Big, which is an electric machine, and it's super easy to use. So you just have to feed it through. 
and that's all there is to it. The nice thing about this is there's no marking, there's no trimming, you just have to layer your pieces, they're already dog-eared, and sew them together with a quarter inch seam and press and your units are complete. Lay out one of each flying geese unit in two rows and note that the geese are flying in opposite directions on the rows. And then sew together the units in each row. I don't want to lose my point when I'm joining it to the other unit, so I like to sew with the point of the flying geese facing up on my sewing machine. That way I can watch it as it goes through the machine and make sure I don't go too far into that point and cut it off. Here's another time that the laser can help you. You can see if you're hitting right there at the intersection of that seam and you're not too far into the point of the flying geese. I've joined my rows and now I will sew the rows together to make my block. Here's the completed block. You'll repeat to make five of these total. Lay out all the blocks in a row, rotating every other block as shown on the table runner assembly diagram. Sew together blocks to complete table runner top. A really cool feature of this Epic 95Q is that you can thread a new bobbin without unthreading the machine. I love that! So you can leave the thread right in the needle, go underneath the presser foot and up to the right, through the bobbin winding thread guide, up to the top thread guide, over to the side thread guide, and then down the side, and then wind your bobbin. This is such a time-saving feature. The table runner top is complete. So next is quilting. So you can layer your quilt sandwich with your batting and backing and baste it. When I'm basting, I love to use this spray and bond basting adhesive. It's just so convenient. You don't have to work around pins and it works great for smaller projects like these. I'm going to quilt on the long arm. I've loaded my table runner onto my frame and I'm going to quilt it with the Handy Quilter Moxie. I'm just learning to long arm, so a smaller project like this is perfect. It gives me a chance to build some skills and practice some designs. I'm quilting a simple back and forth line to fill the triangles, but using a variegated thread to add some interest. I also am using blue on the blue and will switch to red for the red sections. So using a thread that blends more helps disguise any mistakes if you're still learning to long arm. Then I added some loops and stars down the center to finish the quilting. Here's a color option I made with the Pumpkins and Blossoms collection by Fig Tree & Co. for Moda Fabrics. So this one's a little scrappier. I used only fat quarters for this, so I needed 12 for the top. I used four different low volume prints for the rectangles and then eight different prints for the squares. I did some simple stitch in the ditch quilting to finish this table runner, which is an easy way to finish projects on a domestic machine. This is a great table runner project. It goes together super quickly and it can be customized to fit any holiday or occasion you need.